Hey, Retcon Raider here. Now, we've been pretty focused on a single game for the past couple of weeks now, so today, I thought we'd take a quick look at a different game that's recently caught my eye. Today, I thought we'd talk about Solasta, Crown of the Magister, a new game by Tactical Adventures. So, what is Solasta? Well, at a glance, it's a new turn-based tactical RPG with a heavy focus on exploration, character interaction, and unconventional dungeon crawling. Set in a rich and vibrant fantasy world, Solasta is just the latest game to make use of the enduring and popular Dungeons & Dragons rule system, though in this case, it's actually the first video game to make use of the 5th edition rule set that was first introduced back in 2014. Solasta takes place in, well, Solasta, a high fantasy setting with many familiar concepts, but a rather unique twist. It's a world with no humans and no gods, or at least it was. Rather, it's a world that was once shared by the dwarves, elves, and halflings of old, until the high elves, with no gods or higher powers to keep them in check, declared war on their neighbors in an effort to conquer the world. Blessed with the powerful magics of the Arcanium and the military might of the Iron Legion, the Elven Empire quickly began expanding their borders. Neighboring kingdoms fell, one after another, and with each new conquest, the Empire grew ever more powerful. Only the dwarves of the frozen north, bolstered as they were by their stubborn ferocity, their imposing mountain ranges, and the aid of their sylvan neighbors, stood a chance against the sheer might of the Empire. This all changed when a mysterious rift in space appeared in the heart of Air Ally, the elven homeland. A veritable army of humans came pouring into Solasta from another world, bringing strange new magics with them, the likes of which the elven empire had never seen. Although the elves sought to subjugate these new arrivals, they were instead fought to a standstill. Not only had these mysterious visitors come from another world, but they had also brought their strange and powerful new gods with them. And thus, a new chapter of the Elven Wars had begun, as this mysterious new army cut a swath across the heart of the Elven territories, eventually allying with the so-called Snow Alliance. It was only then that the Empire realized that this was not, in fact, an invading army, but rather a mass exodus from a dying world. This army of refugees had traveled to Solasta with the aid of their gods to escape a powerful threat that had consumed their old home. Realizing that this otherworldly entity now posed a dire threat to Solasta as well, the elves desperately called for an alliance with their former enemies. The races of Solasta joined forces, along with the mysterious new visitors, in a monumental effort to seal the rift before it was too late. Although the rift was sealed, reality itself was damaged, and wild magics literally tore the realm to pieces. Entire kingdoms crumbled as wild magics twisted the landscape and gave birth to strange new monstrous species. The elven homelands of Eralai took the brunt of the damage, transformed into little more than a scorched and monster-infested wasteland. But the damage spilled well beyond its borders, pushing the races of Solasta to the very brink of extinction. The main campaign takes place roughly 1,000 years after this magical cataclysm. Pockets of civilization have slowly returned, and the human refugees have long since integrated with the other surviving races. While the worst of the damage is now behind the people of Solasta, there are still a lot of lingering questions in the wake of the disaster, and there's still much work to be done before the Badlands can be reclaimed. This, of course, is where the player comes in. The player is tasked with creating a party of four custom adventurers, and then guiding them through the world of Solasta as they crawl through the ruins of a shattered empire in search of both riches and answers. It's up to the player to decide whether their party is made up of altruistic heroes or opportunistic scoundrels. 
as well as which, if any, of Solasta's struggling factions will benefit from whatever they happen to find. Although we don't know exactly how the final campaign will be balanced, we do know that the majority of the game's focus will be on things like exploration and turn-based tactical combat. Solasta will feature an assortment of handcrafted dungeons filled to overflowing with monsters to fight and secrets to uncover. This is particularly stressed by the unusual level of granularity in the game's planned rule set, putting focus on several aspects of dungeon crawling that are often overlooked in similar CRPGs, or even in most tabletop campaigns. For example, the broken and half-buried ruins of the Elven Empire will often present the player with dungeons featuring an unusually high degree of verticality. Cliffs, chasms, collapsed bridges, and rickety gantries, the ruins in Solasta will often require the player to leap, climb, or even fly to uncover some of the game's most closely guarded secrets. An assortment of unusual spells and magic items will allow the player to navigate obstacles that would be utterly impassable in most other RPGs. A seemingly bottomless pit can be explored by simply casting Featherfall or Spider Climb. A suspended platform can be reached with the assistance of a jump or fly spell, or perhaps even a simple levitation. These elements of verticality will also often play into the otherwise conventional turn-based tactical combat. For example, enemies can be crushed by falling rocks, lured into pitfalls, or even just pushed or pulled off cliffs. Some enemies will also take advantage of the game's unusual level of verticality, with creatures like giant spiders deftly scrambling up walls to both avoid attacks and to circumvent a player's front lines to instead swarm their more vulnerable casters. On a similar note, the game will also feature an unusually heavy focus on the need for reliable illumination. After all, dungeons are dark, and every edition of D&D has included rules for variable lighting conditions. In Solasta, all of these effects are taken into account. Fighting or making skill checks in a low-light environment will impose appropriate penalties, while attempting to do those things in pitch-black conditions might be borderline impossible. Characters can use spells, magic items, or even mundane torches to help avoid these penalties, while characters with low-light vision and dark vision can also avoid these penalties, even they will occasionally find that they could benefit from the presence of a proper light source. Bright lights can impose penalties on some of the denizens of the darkest dungeons, and setting certain obstacles ablaze can create potent hazards to help keep monsters at bay. One of the more interesting, though likely also more controversial aspects of the game, is the particularly granular inventory system. The game will feature a rather in-depth 16-slot equipment system, including slots for things like backpacks, shouldered or sheathed weapons, and readied ammunition. While the character can set up multiple weapon sets, they'll need to make sure that every weapon they want to use is readily accessible, carried over the shoulder or worn on the hips. Otherwise, the player is likely to end up wasting precious time and actions as they fumble through their backpack in search of whatever weapon or item they were hoping to use. Even more surprising, the game also limits the player's carrying capacity in two separate ways, both by weight but also by volume. Things like torches and rations, for example, are easily stored in your average run-of-the-mill backpack, but things like spare shields or weapons are much more difficult to carry. Some objects, such as quarterstaves or other two-handed weapons, are so large that they can't be carried in a backpack at all. In those cases, the character will need to carry the object by hand, strap it across their back, or simply leave it behind. Now this does lead to one of the game's more frustrating issues. Although realistic, inventory micromanagement can quickly get in the way of an otherwise enjoyable game. This is something that the developers have acknowledged, though it's unclear just how much it will actually change as development moves forward. Personally, I find this unusual attention to detail 
to actually be quite refreshing. But then again, I'm also an old-school dungeon master, so take that with a grain of salt. From a combat standpoint, Celesta is definitely much more conventional. The game makes use of a turn-based tactical combat system, based almost entirely on 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, a system I'm not terribly familiar with, but one which seems to blend elements from the two previous editions. Movement is intuitive, handled on a conventional square-based grid, and information is clearly relayed in both a combat log as well as with handy tooltips. Surprisingly, combat is also quite deadly, with even a single untimely crit being enough to fell your toughest fighter. The very first time I played the demo, my entire party was killed and eaten by a ferocious horde of poisonous spiders, which just goes to show that even when they're trying to promote a crowdfunding campaign, Solasta is a game that won't pull any punches. From a presentation standpoint, Solasta is surprisingly cinematic, though also very rough around the edges. I was pleasantly surprised to find that all of the dialogue in the demo is fully voiced, though it's hard to say if that will extend to the full campaign as well. Likewise, the dungeons are interspersed with regular cutscenes, as the adventuring party stumbles upon interesting curio to investigate, or daunting obstacles to overcome. Which actually leads to what I feel is one of Celasta's most unusual features, a fully voiced party of custom characters. Unlike most other CRPGs, which make use of partially or fully voiced story-based companions, Solasta will instead allow the player to build all four of their party members from scratch. While building these characters, however, they will also assign them basic background and personality traits, which will help determine the way they act during the fully voiced cutscenes. It's a feature I don't think I've ever seen before, but one that I find particularly intriguing. While many CRPGs will allow the player to replace story-based companions with completely customized party members, this often comes at the cost of missing out on things like companion quests and party banter. In this case, however, Solasta appears to offer a rather fascinating compromise, essentially turning the player's characters into fully voiced companions, each with their own particular thoughts and opinions about both the things they encounter as well as the choices that they have to make. Of course, I will say that Celesta is not without faults, though it's also important to remember that the game is still in a very early stage of development. The UI is a little cluttered, the sound a little muted, and the animations a little awkward, but overall, I'd actually say it's already looking remarkably good for a game that's still squarely in a pre-alpha state. Honestly, the clunky camera is perhaps the most glaring flaw in an otherwise quite enjoyable demo, and even there, the developers have already acknowledged that this was indeed a problem. They've actually already updated the demo with some new experimental camera systems, including the free roam camera that I actually use to record all this footage. That's a degree of responsiveness I'm not actually used to seeing from most developers. Another minor concern is the game's relatively narrow scope. Like I said, Solasta appears to be a game that is largely focused on exploring dungeons and fighting monsters, but it seems to handle both of those things extremely well. Similarly, the core game is only planned to include four basic races and four basic classes, each with three additional specialty archetypes. However, the game is also being designed with modular expansion in mind, and the developers are already planning to add a fifth class to the core game, once their primary funding goal has been met. Now, at the moment, Celesta is still under active development, and they're currently in the midst of a crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter, which is scheduled to end on October 4th of 2019. Despite what looks to be a rather ambitious game, the developers are aiming for a fairly modest $200,000 goal, and as of September 19th, they're already roughly 80% of the way there. 
As with most crowdfunding campaigns, there's a wide variety of backer tiers to choose from, offering a surprisingly broad array of both physical and digital rewards. This includes the usual assortment of digital goodies, a series of special in-game items, getting your name or face inserted into the game, and even a campaign rulebook allowing you to use the Celasta setting in your tabletop campaign. Backing the project at any tier will also grant you access to special backer polls, which will be used to help influence the game's development. For example, the most recent poll is deciding whether rangers or paladins will be joining the other four basic classes. Perhaps the one glaring absence on the list of rewards is a complete lack of the usual beta or early access programs, which is an unusual choice, but certainly one that I respect. From what I've seen so far, the game is already well on its way towards completion, and promises to be a very intriguing twist on the conventional dungeon-crawling CRPG. Of course, as usual, you don't have to take my word for it. If you think Celasta sounds like the sort of game that you might enjoy, then I strongly encourage you to go check it out for yourself. You can find out more about the game on the official website, the official YouTube channel, or the official crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter. You can also get an early taste of the game by grabbing the free pre-alpha demo, which they recently made available over on Steam. As always, links are in the description.